It is Tuesday, which of course means it's time to answer the questions that you guys send in every single week on the Brendan Place forums at brendanplace.com forward slash forums or in the YouTube comment section down below. Alrighty, guys. We are on the road tonight of champions. Very, very close. Only six days away until the big show. And I'm very much so looking forward to seeing how this one goes down. I think this is going to be a very, very interesting show. I think it's going to be pretty unpredictable in some of these matches. I think uh, we could see some different twists and turns that we weren't really expecting to see, which I think is something that is really missing in the WWE sometimes. You know, we often get a lot of predictable pay-per-views, and that's surprising. I like to see some more shows that's... You know, you don't know what's going to happen. I honestly don't know what's going to happen in some of these big main events. But in this week's edition of Let's Talk Tuesdays, what we're going to do this week is we're going to run through the entire Night of Champions card. And we're going to give thoughts, predictions, and whatever towards the Night of Champions show. Um, as well as that, we're going to talk about the W2K16 roster, the final update. And it was a disappointing one, so I have plenty of things to say about that one. And also, we're going to touch base on Monday Night Raw as well. And I'm also going to talk about the Elimination Chamber pay-per-view, which is coming up in my universe mode very, very soon. And uh, plenty of things are going to happen this week's in Let's Talk Tuesdays. There's not exactly many wrestling news going around. There's not a lot that really happened this week. A bit of a slow one after a couple of weeks of some, oh my god, it was some big weeks recently. But this one a little bit more of a slowish one, so not a lot to to really talk about, but we'll talk about all of your questions later on. I think you guys sent in a lot of questions, and we've got some voicemails this week, which is awesome. Before we get into the show, I just want to give you guys a quick reminder on where you can find the show. We are available on Spreaker. That's kind of like the main source of finding and listening to the show on Spreaker. That's where we upload the shows, and that's where we kind of make the shows available the most. So Spreaker, we are still number three on Spreaker. If you guys haven't already, make sure you follow the show on Spreaker and download the shows there and keep supporting us. We had just got on iHeartRadio as well, and we're still very, very new. We're right down the bottom of the rankings there because we've just got on there. So if you guys do use iHeartRadio, check out Let's Tuesdays on that and help bump up our rate, our ranking on there and uh, give the show some ratings and give the show some love on iHeartRadio. I think iHeartRadio is pretty cool. I haven't really used it that much, to be honest, but uh, I think it's pretty cool. When I've, I had a quick look around, it's, it's pretty good. So... Um, I know there's a, there's an app on your phone for all of these anyways. And um, the next one, of course, is Stitcher. We're available on Stitcher. I haven't really used much of Stitcher, but uh, um, I know all the top shows are on Stitcher, so make sure you check that out. And, of course, iTunes as well. And if you download the show on iTunes, that really, really helps us out a lot. So keep downloading, keep playing, keep supporting the show on iTunes, and, of course, on YouTube. So that's the best ways to find us, Talk Tuesdays, and all links are always posted on the YouTube channel and on the, the website as well, so you'll never miss a show ever. And I think it's pretty cool you guys can have so many different ways to listen to the show. So if you're out, out and about, you can't access your computer to watch a YouTube video, you can you know, load it up on Stitcher or Spreaker or whatever and listen to it there. So I think, I think that's pretty cool. So I just want to also give a quick shout out to the Patreons. We had nine people this week jump on the Patreon, which is fantastic. We've raised over $100 already, which is amazing. And uh, I really want to thank each and every one of those who have supported the show on Patreon. You guys will get, you have support of the Patreon, you will get your individual shout outs when the end of the month, you know, when the Patreon goes through. But uh, I know some people were kind of pissed off last week that I spent like eight minutes talking about it last week. But I just want to also address this like, Let's Talk Tuesdays is about me talking about whatever's on my mind, giving you guys updates, giving you guys everything that's going on with Brendan Plays. You know, it's me talking about whatever I want on a Tuesday. And obviously, I'm a wrestling channel, so wrestling is a big part of the show. If I want to talk about what's going on in my universe mode, or if I've got some ideas or things I want to do, or what I did this week, I'm going to do that. So that's just the way it goes. So if you guys are complaining about me spending some time talking about something that's quite important to my channel and quite important to me, well, then that's, that's on you. But uh, I want to give... A shout-out to everyone that jumped on the Patreon. Over $100 raised, like I said, which is amazing. Uh, we've already smashed two of our goals already. And if you haven't already jumped on the Patreon, there will be a link in the description down below. And Elimination Chamber is coming up very, very soon. So if you get on the Patreon before the Elimination Chamber is up up and running, you can get the Elimination Chamber early, a couple days early, which I think is pretty cool. That's Like I said last week, that's the one that I would definitely be jumping on. And uh, not many people have. A lot of you guys have actually just gone above and beyond 
And of course, the $20 option is to get an extra Let's Talk Tuesdays episode as well as everything else. And some of you guys, I think actually we've got more people on that rather than the the, uh, the smaller option. So that's really, really cool. So I want to thank everyone that's done that. And like I said, when the, the end of the month comes through, then we'll give you guys your individual shout outs. And uh, yeah, we also have to do an extra Let's Talk Tuesday at one point. So I'll, I'll give you guys an update on when that's going to happen and uh, where you guys can submit some extra questions that will be answered just for that exclusive episode, which I think is going to be pretty cool. Um, W2K16 roster reveal. This is the one I really want to talk about today. I'm kind of excited to talk about this in more ways than one. One uh, being that um, this week's roster reveal, I, like I said on Twitter, was very, very disappointing. Very disappointing. But overall, the roster itself is exciting. But there's just so m- many people that got left out of the game that I'm scratching my head. I'm really wondering what happened because they were doing so well with their roster. Really, they really were doing well. This roster was really shaping up to be fantastic. And you guys know that. The last few episodes of Let's Talk Tuesdays, I've been talking about the, the roster reveal, and I've been very, very happy with it. I've been praising it a lot. But the one thing I've always said was I want everybody that's available, everyone that's signed in a contract, that's wrestled in like the last year, to be in the game. And that's fair enough. Like, if they're a part-time and they appeared once, okay, fair enough. But if they've been active then they should be in the game. So it me- makes me wonder, where is the likes of the Lost Matadors? Um, we know the four horsewomen, you know, what's going on there? Um, some other guys from NXT, I can, can you know, okay, that's fine. That's NXT. You can't have everyone from NXT. But still, like you said, excluding some people from the main roster, it's really scratching my head, and I'm just kind of wondering what the hell is going on. They're doing so well. And, an- and another thing, you know, they were saying that, we're not going to have any duplicates. So the old school version of The Undertaker and Sting and The Big Show, that's not going to count towards our 120 roster, 120 member uh, superstar roster. Well, it did. It did because they've got, this week they came out with, you know, 10 different duplicates. I've got the whole roster right in front of me. We'll talk about it in a moment. But they came out with all these different duplicates. So I don't know what the hell's going on. And this is pretty poor marketing and pretty poor um, PR because they've lied to the fans and they've promised something, and they haven't delivered. Now, whether it's a case of, okay, you get the game, there's some surprises in there, I highly doubt that. I really doubt that that's going to be the case. I really think this is the roster, because why would they make you buy the game, and then all of a sudden, oh, there's Sasha Banks, yay. No, they would be telling you, here's Sasha Banks, she's here, she's in the game, to get you guys hyped up. They would be they're making a big mistake by not saying that she's in the game. And then when you get the game, oh, there she is. No, they're not going to do that. So that's def- definitely not the case in my personal opinion. I'll talk about what I think about what's going on there. But first of all, let's get right into this week's roster reveal. So we had American Badass Undertaker, so the old school Undertaker, straight up. Like we said, first one announced, Undertaker. And I'm happy with that he's in the game. Undertaker, Badass Undertaker's cool. I like that. But the problem is, that has taken a spot for someone else, you know, that's, that's my problem, you know, they wanted 120 people in there, yep, they've got that, but now you have these duplicates in there, that doesn't need to be in there, the next one was Baron Corbin, so that's cool, that's great, Big E, Bray Wyatt, both expected, Brian Pillman, alright, I like that, another legend, cool, and obviously has quite a lot of ties with the Austin thing, so that's cool, um, Cass and S, Ca- Colin Cassidy and Enzo More. That's great. I, I, we knew that was going to happen because we saw like, like the, the spoilers, how they had the soft shirt um, uh, in a previous entrance video. So we kind of knew that was going to happen. The Usos win are in, so that's very expected. Kofi Kingston as well. Connor from The Ascension. Mark Henry. Now, I think this is the old Mark Henry version. I think this is old school Henry from what I saw in the renders. I may be wrong, but uh, Mark Henry is in. Mikey Whipwreck, Whipwreck, I should say. So this one was definitely left field. I was like, whoa, okay, but that's cool. I do like it, but like I said, having these guys in replacing some current day people to me is a problem. But if you didn't have all these duplicates and all these other people that should be in the game is in the game, then having Mikey Whipwreck in there is fantastic. That's great. Someone different. That's awesome. But the problem is with this one, Ministry Undertaker, that's taking a spot for someone else. And that scratch, that's leading me to scratch my head going, what the hell's going on? Ricky Steamboat, okay. Rusev, that's all we expected. Savio Vega. 
or Vija. I don't know. I've never heard of this guy before. I honestly, this one just kind of went straight by me. I've never heard of this guy. I obviously I didn't watch during the era. I think he had a feud with Austin in 95, 96 or something like that. And we all know that was some pretty dark days in the, the WWE or WWF at the time. They're trying to rebuild themselves. So that was an era that I haven't really gone back and watched. So I didn't even know of this guy because I haven't heard of him at all. I thought he might have had some other different name that I might have known. But I haven't. I've never heard of this guy. So that was very, very surprising, obviously. Stephanie McMahon Helmsley. So we have two versions of Stephanie. I don't know if that's really necessary. But we do. Sting 1999 and Surface Sting, that's really expected. I think we all knew that was probably going to happen because they had the renders from last year, just poured it straight over, easy done, two two extra guys. But again, when you say, okay, no duplicates, 120 unique superstars, then you have this. Why? What's going on? Stunning Steve Austin, no surprise there. Victor from The Ascension and Xavier Woods. So. Don't get me wrong, there were some great names being re- revealed. Obviously, there were some expected names. There wasn't were really any surprises in terms of the current day guys. But, um, yeah, I mean, some really kind of left-field decisions there. And the duplicates was a real problem. They'd done so well before this. I don't know what happened this week. Uh, you know, couldn't they get the Lost Matadors in? I mean, I, mean, I know we don't give a shit about the Matadors, but... It's an extra tag team in a game that doesn't have any tag teams. So for me personally, when I'm playing Unis mode, I really want the Matadors to be in there just so I have another tag team for my show. But now I don't, so I'm going to have to try and create them. And fair enough if they kind of give you so many different unique options to create all these people. That's fair enough if they do that. But for a lot of the time, there isn't really that many options to kind of create these custom guys and make them on point, especially for the Matadors. I mean, I I downloaded some Matadors and they just look so bad. So if they give us you know, some outfits to really kind of create the Matadors ourselves, that's cool, that's fine with me, I can live with that, that's not really a big issue for me, it's not like it's The Rock or, you know, John Cena or someone get left out of the game, it's the Lost Matadors, so after all, if they just give us some creativity options that we can create the Matadors pretty decently, that's fine, but um, yeah, just some people left out that I'm just not sure about, the Divas was the real problem, this is one, this is what everyone was blowing up about on Twitter, um, I actually went ahead and read, read some of the tweets, and a lot of people were pissed off that Sasha Banks, Becky Lynch, Charlotte, um, Bailey not in the game. I mean, even Rosa Mendez, I b- believe she was rumored to be in. She's not in. I think Alexa Bliss was rumored to be in. She's not in there. So what's going on with the Divas? That's my concern at the moment. I have no idea what, what what's happening with the Divas. And that's a bit of a problem because I think the Divas, they talk about a huge Diva revolution right now. When in the game, you don't have any of these divas that are currently doing the revolution. So when they're on the main roster right now, and mind you, they haven't been on the main roster for a long time, but you got all these people from NXT, right? And you don't have the former NXT champion, Charlotte. You don't have the former NXT champion, Sasha Banks, who would have been NXT champion at the time of them making or making all these renders and doing all these things, creating the people. And now you don't have the new NXT champion, Bailey, And obviously, Becky Lynch has been involved in a number of title matches there on NXT as well. So it's kind of wondering, wow, where are the Divas? Now, I, I personally believe they've left them out on purpose. I think they've already made them. I think they're in the game. They've scanned them. I think they've made them. Now, do I think they're going to be in the main game? No, I do not. Because this is W2K going to capitalize on the whole quote-unquote Divas Revolution. Now, we all know there's not really Divas Revolution, and we can just go, you know, finger point at Monday Night Raw tonight, and we'll realize that there is no Divas Revolution, but we'll talk about that later. But this is the W2K capitalizing on this Divas Revolution by them having a Divas Revolution pack, a DLC pack that will feature all these women that I just mentioned before, and maybe they'll throw Rosa Mendes in there too, maybe they'll put Carmella in from NXT... Uh, who else could put in? You know, everyone that's that might put in, you know, five, six, seven divas in there and have an NXT. Sorry, not an NXT, just a divas revolution pack. Some main roster divas and some NXT divas, and just have a divas revolution pack. Now, you know, some people are saying, well, divas revolution. That's only you know Sasha, Becky, Charlotte. But no, I think it's. Um, I think they'll just put all these divas that didn't make the cut. I'll just think they'll put them all in one big pack and try and sell that to you. And use Sasha Banks and Charlotte and Becky as the main selling points. Sasha Banks probably in particular as the main selling points of that pack. 
Now, personally, I think that's on paper, that's a good DLC pack. I think that's a great pack. I would definitely be encouraged to get that. But in saying that, at the same time, they should have these people already in the game. That's my problem. They've left, they clearly have left these women out purposely, and they feel as though, okay, we can probably just get away with this, but they've left these women out purposely to try and sell DLC, and that's a problem. You can't marginalize that. You can't deliberately leave people out to try and sell DLC. This year alone, I think they can really sell DLC very comfortably. The Dudley boys are back. Put them in a DLC pack. It will sell with those two guys alone. Doesn't matter who else you got in there. Throw in the fucking... Uh, the Boogeyman. Throw in, you know... I don't know. The Brooklyn Brawler. It doesn't matter who you throw in there. It'll sell with the Dudley boys. Maybe you can do an e- ECW pack and put Rob Van Dam in there again, um, who, by the way, probably should be in the game as well. I know he's not technically in the WWE right now, but, I mean, you know, they've got the render. They've got Santino in the game. Surely they could have just put Rob Van Dam in there and put him under WWE Legends. Surely. Surely. Um, so that's another one I was scratching my head around. But maybe they'll do an ECW pack and they might bring back, you know, might, might throw the Sandman or Sabu or, you know, some guys in there. And, you know, maybe they'll do that and sell another pack. But, you know, this year, like I said, you got Braun Strowman as well. You know, you, can just, you throw him in there as a pack and that'll probably sell. So they've got plenty of people that can sell the DLC off. But So I don't know why they're really taking all these women and um, tossing them aside in the main game and putting them in DLC. That's a little frustrating for me and uh, I know a lot of people agree with me that they're not happy to see them in the game if they're not DLC then that's a big problem so if they're at least DLC I'll be happy but to be honest I would have liked to see them in the game straight up I know for me personally obviously universe mode's a big thing so I would like to have as many people as I can to access on universe mode and we all know the creator divas look terrible they've always looked terrible in any game Creating women always looks bad. Um, not many games have been able to get long hair right. Uh, that's always looked really, really shoddy and really just bad. So I get the feeling that they'll probably force us to create them and it just won't really look that great. You know, for the most part, though, a lot of the created wrestlers on 2K15, you get some that look pretty good. You're like, all right, that's pretty good. But I just get the feeling the created divas are not going to be up to standard of that and it's going to be very, very ugly looking and just not feeling right so long story short this week's roster reveal was very very frustrating and i'm a little disappointed in 2k i really had high hopes for them and i really felt as though 2k was on the right path of success here they got the roster right but they've messed up in the last week and perhaps that's why they waited to the last week i mean they probably should have did it you know halfway through uh Oh, well, I suppose they can't really do that, but they had to wait to the end to cop the burden, so they've made it as though it sounds so great, so great, so great, and then right at the end, they sneak in one more week, and it's disappointing. So they were doing so well, but uh, yeah, I don't know if they're going to re- announce the DLC anytime soon. I get the feeling they won't announce the DLC probably until um, the game comes out. I hate it when, when uh, companies announce the DLC like two months in advance. That just goes to show that they could easily put it in the game. So if I was 2K, I would wait until the game is out, perhaps a couple of weeks into the game launch, and announce the DLC packs to kind of give yourself a little bit more buzz and give people something to look forward to as well. But um, yeah, I, as well as Legends, I suppose, you know, I was also thinking that uh, Kurt Angle should have been in the... Austin Showcase. I know he's under contract with TNA, so that would have been an issue, but um, I, I suppose that next year Kurt Angle will probably make a return to WWE Gaming, so I think that's really exciting now that he's not re- renewing his contract with uh, TNA, and we'll talk more that, about that later on. But um, yeah, I think Kurt Angle played a bit of a pivotal part in Austin's career, but certainly in like 2001. So uh, I don't know how long Austin's showcase goes for, whether it ends at the Attitude Era or if it goes all the way until his career is done in 2003. I'd dare say it'll go all the way. So I know Angle played was a big part of it, so it's you know disappointing that he's not going to get in there. I wasn't really expecting that, but you know deep down inside I was somewhat hoping. But um, yeah, so just yeah, I just I don't know the roster. I was so happy, but now I'm a little bummed out by it. But uh, 
We move on now to Night of Champions and the card predictions that I've got for this Sunday's big show. Now, I don't know how to feel about the card overall. I think um, there's some matches definitely looking forward to. I think overall the show could be pretty good, and um, I think I think it's uh, you know your standard kind of show. I don't think it's going to be amazing, but I think it'll be good enough for a Night of Champions. So we'll start it off with the kickoff. This one was announced on Raw. I think there was about three more matches announced on Raw. So we've got the Cosmic Wasteland, which is the Ascension and Stardust taking on the Lucha Dragons and Neville. Now, I'm going to say right now, I'm very pleased with the the pairing of the Ascension and Stardust. Now, mind you, I did skip their match on Raw this week, but overall, I think this is a good pairing because the Ascension are doing absolutely nothing and Stardust is just pretty much doing nothing himself. He's just hanging in there. So you give Stardust, who has been, you know, the cheat, the cheating, you know, heel and, you know, the, the dirty heel. If you give him some two henchmen to do his dirty work for him, I think it could work. And the Ascension not doing anything. And I know they're going to win on SmackDown, so perhaps there's something in there for them. So, yeah, I don't know. I think it could be the, the start of something small, nothing great, but something a little bit small for the Cosmic Wasteland. It's, I, I guess it's just kind of sad to see how far Stardust has fall, fallen. I mean, Cody Rhodes, we all kind of thought he was a, a big future in the WWE, but he just never was able to take that next step up. A bit like Dolph Ziggler. I mean, Ziggler got the opportunities. Cody Rhodes didn't really, but uh, yeah, Cody Rhodes, I always felt him and Ziggler had very similar careers. Um, you know, just were not able to take that next step into the main event and forever in the upper mid card. But, uh, yeah, he's even fallen further down. I'd set, dare say he's in the lower mid-card right now. And uh, he's alongside Neville, who is another guy who just got going a little bit. And he had a little bit of steam coming off NXT, came into the roster. And, yeah, they just didn't know what to do with him. They just didn't know what to do with him. And now he's just hanging around. And the Lucha Dragons, they're another team that suffered from that as well. They brought them in, and they've done absolutely nothing at all. Nothing at all. I mean, they got a. They didn't even get a tag. I think they got like one tag title shot in like a fatal four way or something. Like, they've done nothing with the Lucha Dragons. I thought they were going to bring them in and push them right to the titles and really do something, but they just never got going at all. They've done absolutely nothing. So it's a very strange one. And I don't know. I just think all these guys just. They all need to win. So I, I'm going to say. I'm going to say the Cosmic Wasteland's going to win. I think they'll probably win by cheating or doing something, you know, heelish and win, and and yeah, so I don't think many people are going to really care about this one, but uh, it just goes to show all six of these guys had some potential. The Ascension and NXT were pretty cool. You bring them up to the main roster, and they bombed badly, and they still haven't changed their gimmick. They're still coming out doing exactly the same thing. You think they needed to repackage them, take them off TV for three months, repackage them, and do something with them, and turn them into something, but no, they've just kept them doing the exactly the same thing. We all know it's not working, and that's just WWE being stubborn, I guess. Oh, who cares? It's just the ascension. They've failed. Well, we'll just keep them, keep shelling them out there until you know we've got no choice but to repackage them. But yeah, come on, you could do something with them. But like I said, I think the Cosmic Wasteland will probably win that one. Um, so Intercontinental Championship: Kevin Owens versus Ryback. This one was announced on Raw as well. I like that little back and forth on Raw. I mean, Ryback's little dance that he did was pretty bad. And I'm a Ryback fan, so I was like, oh, that's that's pretty brutal. But um, the promo they had back and forth, I thought that was pretty good. I did enjoy that little segment, so um, I'll talk more of that when I get to Raw. But um, I think this could be a good match. I think this is the match that Ryback needs. He's been facing the big show in the Miz. You give him Kevin Owens. I think this could really show us what Ryback's capable of doing as a champion. Um, will Kevin Owens win? I think a lot of people are going to say yes, he will. But I personally think Ryback is still walking out as champion. I think Ryback, he might... Ju- I think he'll probably just beat Kevin Owens clean. I think it'll be a close back and forth, but Ryback will get the better of him. And, you know, with what they've been doing with Kevin Owens, you just can't trust in them to really give him anything. So, I think Ryback will probably win. And they might. maybe he'll... Maybe Kevin Owens will get himself disqualified or something like that and keep the rivalry going. But I think this is one I think I would hope that they would do two or three um, pay-per-views with. I think this could really have a lot of potential and give the Intercontinental Championship a little bit of spotlight because it's really been struggling and really falling very, very far behind 
the United States Championship. So it's amazing. You know, probably two years ago, we were saying the the U.S. title is terrible. It's just dreadful. And now, all of a sudden, the U.S. title is leaps and bounds above the IC title. I mean, that's not saying much, because the IC title wasn't that great either. I mean, the IC title got um, elevated a little bit. I thought it was starting to come back into something somewhat important. But um, I think if Daniel Bryan had been champion and held on to his title before he got injured, he probably would have done a lot more to that title and kind of given it a little bit more spotlight. But unfortunately, that didn't happen. And then Ryback got injured as well. So the IC title hasn't really much chance to really um, gain any exposure and really show us what uh, these guys competing for the title can really do. So I think this might be the start to the right direction for the Intercontinental Championship. And uh, we might see Ryback and Kevin Owens have a pretty good match and uh, give a little bit of spotlight to the IC title. I think Ryback will probably somehow win that one. But uh, if I was WWE, I would be continuing this feud and uh, having at least a couple more matches for the championship at uh, Helm to Cell and maybe Survivor Series. Next one, WWE Tag Team Championship. The New Day versus the Dudley Boys. This one was expected, but I wish they kind of went for my idea, which was the triple threat tag team match. Even though I hate the triple threat tag team concept that they do, where it's two teams in the one ring and the other team's just standing there doing fucking nothing. I hate that. I absolutely hate the hell out of that. Just irritates me. But uh, a one-on-one match between the New Day and the Dudleys, I think if the Dudley boys win, I get the feeling it's too soon. You can't bring them back and give them the title straight away. It's too soon. So, for me personally, the New Day has to win. They've got to cheat. They've got to use Xavier Woods on the outside, distract the Dudleys, distract the ref, do something, cheat and win, and then you set up another match down the line, and then maybe the Dudley boys might win, or maybe they won't even win. Maybe they, you know, they get one shot, that's it, the primetime players, then they get the next shot, and then the New Day cheat to win again there, and then perhaps you do a triple threat there at Survivor Series, something like that. So you've got to have the New Day keep these titles and just keep on cheating and, you know, doing whatever it takes and just being annoying and arrogant and just, you know, just little pests. Just keep on cheating to win, and eventually... People will want to see the New Day lose those titles to perhaps the Dudleys again, and then you can build it up, slow build, and do it right. If they give the Dudley boys the tag title straight away, it's just like, oh, okay, whatever. But after a couple months of the New Day just doing, you know, just cheating constantly and just being a pain in the ass, you give the titles to the Dudley boys, it'll be, all right, sweet, they deserve that. Finally, you know, it'll be a much better situation. I personally thought a triple threat at Night of Champions then have the New Day pin the new, the, the primetime players. You know, maybe the Dudley boys had the match won. Big E throws Devon out of the ring, and then he comes in and steals the pin and pins Darren Young. And then you have another match in Hell in a Cell with the Dudleys and the New Day. He might drop the titles there. I thought that might have been a better idea, but um, they're going to go straight away at New Day and Dudleys, which I just get the feeling that might be a little bit too soon. And uh, I know the primetime players were just kind of like the third wheels. We all know it was all about the New Day and the Dudleys, and the primetime players were just there. But they could have just been there in a triple threat and be the placeholders in that match and take the pin to keep the rivalry going and kind of extend this out a little bit more. Because once you do the New Day and the Dudleys, who else is there really to do? I mean, the primetime players and the Dudleys, okay, that might be all right. But other than that, there's really not much else unless they bring the Whites into the tag picture you know, like I said, I would have mind, would have loved to have seen Roman Reigns and Dean Ambrose enter the tag title pitch as well. And that's something that I really think the WWE is missing, is having some star power in the tag team division and bringing in, you know, some of these top tier guys and bring them in feuded for the titles. You know, if you had the Dudleys, uh, sorry, if you had the Wyatts over against the Reigns and Ambrose for the tag titles, that would be huge. But um, they kind of have these tag matches, but don't ever allude to these guys possibly competing for the tag team title. So I think that's something for the future that they should probably, if they can't find anything for Reigns and Ambrose to do, just um, can stay as a team for a little bit longer and perhaps have a couple matches against the Dudleys for the tag titles on the New Day. That'd be awesome. But uh, I do think the New Day should win that one, like I said, by doing something with cheating-wise. Next one, Rusev versus Dolph Ziggler. I think Rusev wins this one. There's no Lana at the moment. Rusev, give him the win, and you can continue the hot summer and Rusev thing. This whole love angle, this whole love triangle, and well, you know, four of them now, but Lana's gone, so this whole Ziggler and Summer Rae thing, it's kind of interesting. I don't mind it, but um, 
Rusev, he's gone from being the unbeatable heel monster, the guy that I personally thought could have been straight away injected into the main event and would hold his own. Until now, he's doing a love angle, a romance angle in the mid-card with Dolph Ziggler. Just goes to show how the mighty have fallen. Dolph Ziggler this time last year at Survivor Series. Wow. million bucks. It was the next big thing. We all thought Dolph Ziggler's going to be the man. And now, nearly a year later, doing a love angle on in the mid-card. Disappointing. And I, I wasn't really expecting them to do much with Ziggler. But Rusev, I had high hopes for. I really thought they were going to do a lot with him. Considering they gave him the lo- such a long US title reign. Undefeated for such a long time. I really thought they were going to do some big, big things with Rusev. Now, he's losing every damn week on the show. Um, Cesaro beat him this week. Ugh. It's just, I don't know what the hell they're doing. I mean, what happened to Rusev? I like Rusev a lot. He's great. But in the role that he's in, I just don't like it. He should be the Bulgarian brute, the the ass kicker, beating the shit out of everyone, just being the man. But instead, he's kissing Hot Summer and, you know, crying over Summer Rae getting a present by Dolph Ziggler. And, ah, man, I don't know. Get this feud over and done with and try and rebuild Rusev to something. Please. Please, I'm begging you. But um, like I said, I think Rusev should win that one. Since there's no more Lana, there's no real sense for Ziggler to win. Uh, Rusev should win that one. Next one, we have the Divas Championship. Charlotte versus Nikki Bella. Straight away, Charlotte's winning this. Nikki Bella held onto the title. Um, the, the twin magic thing on Raw which I thought was awful. I just hated every moment of that. I just think that was terrible. What these divas needed to do was go out there and have a killer match. Nikki gets the better of Charlotte or some kind of distraction, some kind of angle to kind of set something else up. But instead, I mean, I get what they did, but I just think the twin magic thing is just so bad. I think they could have just had Brie distract and, you know, or maybe Charlotte... And Nikki Bella had her foot on the ropes the whole time, and then while Charlotte pinned her and won, the referee reverses it. You know what I'm talking about. But instead, they went the twin magic thing, and, you know, Charlotte thought she won. So I didn't mind that, but honestly, I just... Uh, I thought the overall thing was disappointing. And we'll talk about NXT later on, but considering NXT is going to have a 30-minute Iron Man match, the next TakeOver special, for the Women's Championship, that's the Divas Revolution. That is going to be a killer match. That might be the best women's match we'll ever see in the WWE. Instead, on the big show, Monday Night Raw, we have that. We have Brie stuffing tissues down her bloody bra and coming in pretending she's Nikki and she looks absolutely nothing like her. And, ah, uh, fuck finishes. I mean, what's going on? This deep revolution is just terrible. So, anyways, we'll, we'll rant about that later on. But the Divas Championship, Charlotte should win. Let's just do it. Let's just get the the belt off Nikki and start something fresh. Breathe some new life into the women's division on Raw and start something different. And I think it may be too soon for Charlotte, but I think, you know, the reaction she got on Raw, you know, you have Ric Flair in there, everyone is digging that. I think it can work. And you give Charlotte the belt and uh, beats N- N- Nikki. And then I honestly think someone from PCB, which is a terrible name, by the way, Team PCB will turn on Charlotte. And I think it's got to be Paige, because you think about it, she is the whole revolutionist. She started the Divas Revolution, and then you think about it, Becky and Charlotte have come in and taken her spot. Sasha's taken a spot, taken the spotlight, and now Charlotte wins the championship. It makes sense you have Paige attack Charlotte after the match, or I thought Paige might even cost Charlotte the match at on Raw this week and set something else up there, but they didn't go that way. Maybe she'll do it at Night of Champions, and maybe Nia will hold on to the championship, and then he brings Sasha Banks into it. But uh, I think Paige has to turn heel and do something, because this whole PCB thing where it's all lovey-dovey, it's not working, they need to do something to spice this up. And Paige, it makes all the sense in the world. She was the top diva on Raw. She was, you know, the number one contender, 
and she brought in these other they brought in these other divas and they've taken her spot. And what better way to do it by taking out the person that you know took her spot, whether she's the champion or not? Take out Charlotte and bring on a Page versus Charlotte feud, maybe for the championship, maybe not. But um, I think that'd be the way to go, and that could really bring some life into the revolution because right now it's not it's not a Divas Revolution; it's just a bust. So that has to happen. U.S. Championship matchup: Seth Rollins versus John Cena. I'm going to have to say John Cena's going to win because, you know, you can never really bet against John Cena. I think Seth Rollins is losing one championship. If Seth Rollins retains the US title, he's losing the world title because I can see Sting winning and Sheamus comes in and cashes in and steals the spotlight from Sting. That's what I see there. But since Sting and Cena got the win on, on Raw... Maybe that's leading towards Seth Rollins getting the win at the pay-per-view. So I think Seth, we might just escape and cheat or do something. You know, Seth Rollins like to beat Cena, but he gets he loses the title at the end of the night to to Rollins. Uh, sorry, to uh, Sting. Personally, I'd rather see Rollins lose the U.S. title and keep the world title, but because that's just because I do not want to see Sheamus as the champion, but. I think the way that they probably will go if I'm going to have Seth drop the title of Sting is not to have Sting keep the championship, but to have Sting win it, celebrate. Oh my God, Sting has done it. He's won the biggest prize, the one championship that he's never won. Here comes Sheamus, bro kicks him, one, two, three, takes it all away. Maybe you set up a Sting versus Sheamus versus Seth Rollins match. Set up something for that. And then you have Sheamus hang, hang on to the championship and then... You know, you take Sting out of the title pitcher and Seth out of the title pitcher and you start something different with Sheamus. Perhaps you bring Brock Lesnar back. I don't know, but um, yeah. So, very interesting how they'll, they'll play that one out. But uh, I think for the, the first matchup will be Cena. I think Cena will probably win. I don't know. Like I said, it can go either way. This is the one, these are the two matches I don't know because I can see either scenario. So, to give my prediction, I think because I don't think Seth Rollins really should be US champion. I don't think that's a good move. I think Seth, keeping him in the main event, keeping him around the world title title is better. So maybe he'll lose both titles. Maybe he'll walk out of the pay view as championship-less. You know, he'll have no titles, which would be terrible for Seth. That would really ruin his character. I mean, that would really make him look bad, but I could see it happening. Um, but I get the feeling he'll keep one title... I'm going to say he'll keep the world title, just to give you something. I'm going to say he'll hang on to the world title. I don't know. But um, I personally believe the Sheamus cash in will probably happen. So um, I think uh, Sheamus will probably walk out champion. But I, I hope it doesn't happen. I want him to be still world champion because Sheamus as champion is giving me nightmares. And finally, Dean Ambrose and Roman Reigns and their mystery partner versus the Wyatt family. I'm looking forward to this one because I want to know who the mystery partner is. I thought they might have thought might have brought him out on Raw. I'm kind of glad they didn't. But I didn't like what happened with their segment on Raw because they were just talking on Miz TV, which I found it funny that, you know, Miz, when Ambrose and Reigns came in and Miz is just talking smack, he's like, oh, yes, I've got Reigns and Ambrose and the wife filling my show. And then Ambrose comes in and throws Miz straight out of the ring. I laughed my ass off. I thought that was hilarious. But, um, I think the confrontation between these two has been very interesting. And since bringing in Braun has been a very, very good move. I think the Wyatt family has to win this match. It doesn't matter who Ambrose and Reigns bring in. The rumor is Baron Corbin. We talked about that, about that last week. Now, a lot of people think it's going to be Randy Orton. I don't think Randy Orton's going to be in because I think he's going to be taking some time off. And they took out Randy. They took out Jimmy Uso. So it would take, make no sense for just Randy Orton to be in there. What about Jimmy? You know, so I think it's going to be someone completely different. Someone you don't expect. And it has to be someone from NXT or a returning legend. It cannot be. It cannot be just someone hanging around like Cesaro. It cannot be just Cesaro hanging around the back eating catering. It can't be Zack Ryder who's, you know, eating a chicken salad in the back and with that, oh yeah, Zack, you're available. Why don't you come tag up, tag, tag up with us? It can't be that because it has to be someone we haven't seen, someone from NXT or a returning legend. Now I think more likely it's going to be someone from NXT. The rumor is Baron Corbin. Is that going to be the fit? Maybe. Do I want to see Baron Corbin? I'm not a big fan. 
I haven't really seen much of him, to be honest. To be fair, I haven't really seen much of him, but there's been a reason why I haven't seen much of him, because I don't really see much in him. So, the rumor is Baron Corbin, and if they want to bring him up, this is a good way to do it. You immediately make him a bigger name. You know, you align him with Ambrose and Reigns. People go, all right, this guy must be pretty good. He's with Ambrose and Reigns. This is cool. And you might get him a good reaction and start off his main, main roster career. Good. Or you bring back a returning legend, a name that we all know. Perhaps, I mean, who can we bring back? You know, perhaps, let's just have some fantasy here. Maybe a Rob Van Dam, maybe a Chris Jericho. Um, we know Jericho and White has some history. Yeah, that could kind of work, but I doubt Jericho would do it. Um, I don't know. There's really not many guys that you can think about that potentially could come back. Um, people from injury... Sami Zayn, unlikely. Atami, doubt it. Um, Eric Rowan is the, pe- the name that a lot of people are thinking. And if it's Eric Rowan, no. Eric Rowan will ruin this angle straight away. No one's going to care. They'll have Ambrose and Reigns come out to the ring. And we're all waiting around for the, for the music to hit. Who's it going to be? Who's it going to be? And you hear that stupid fucking Eric Rowan jingle that comes out that he does his stupid walk. I, I kind of like, all right, I like the walk, but I like his entrance. But you bring him out, and oh my god, it will be crickets. It will be dreadful. So I don't want that to happen to poor old Eric Rowan because I, I started to like the guy. I mean, until he got destroyed by the big show back at uh, the stairs match. Ugh. But. Yeah, I just Eric Rowan would be such a bad decision. Personally, bring him back, Eric Rowan. You bring him back, and you put him in the Wyatts. You put him in the. You bring him back to the family because there's no reason why. What is the tension between, you know, Rowan and the Wyatts? What they replaced him because he got injured. They had to find someone else because he let the team down. If anything, the Wyatts should be coming after Rowan, not the other way around. You let us down. You got injured. We had to find someone else because of you. If anything, it'd be the Whites coming after Rowan, not the other way around. So, uh, Rowan would just be a bad idea. So, I personally believe you debut someone, someone new, something exciting, something different, or you bring back a legend for a night, and you just do that and whatever. So, I personally believe the White family will win anyway. The Ambrose and Reigns, for some reason, went somewhere. You bring back whoever, you debut whoever, it doesn't matter, the White family should win, and that's the way it should be. Alrighty, so that's Night of Champions, and overall, the card, what do I think about it? Just having a look there, I think it looks pretty promising, so I know we spent a lot of time on that, but uh, there really isn't much to talk about on Raw. In fact, I think we, we covered everything on Raw anyway, so um, the big season pre- premiere tonight on Raw, and I thought they did a pretty good job and building it up and making it a pretty exciting show, and honestly, I got caught up in the NFL hype. I, I stopped watching Raw, and I went over to Monday Night Football. I thought that's kind of interesting coming from me, because I'm not an NFL guy, but... Uh, I watched because I wanted to see the uh, Jared Haney, you guys might know, playing for the 49ers, the big Australian rugby league guy coming along. A big hand, I was always a big fan of Jared Haney, so him playing NFL was fucking awesome. So I went over and watched um, the 49ers play, and I've jumped on the 49ers bandwagon. I'm a fan now. I've jumped on the bandwagon because Haney is playing for them. So I was w- watching that game, and... Uh, didn't mind me that I uh, had a uh, little bet on the uh, the 49ers to win as well, and I won some uh, beautiful cash. So I was not watching Raw. I, ton- I watched it later on, but I uh, was watching the 49ers. I kind of watched the uh, watched Raw whilst um, the 49ers, like, like the commercial breaks and things like that, because I haven't really watched a lot of American sports, but there's so many stoppages, it's ridiculous. In Australia, it's just bang, bang, bang. We just keep going. We don't stop. You know, we just It just keeps going. The action just keeps going. But in America, they really draw it out and have so many stoppages and just really relaxing, you know. So, yeah, so I was able to watch it whilst I was, you know, in between commercial breaks and stoppages and things like that anyway. So, but yeah, so um, Monday Night Raw, I thought for the season premiere, I think their ratings would probably take a huge uh, hit. But um, having Sting compete on Raw was probably a, was a very... I think they kind of messed up by not announcing that earlier on. If you announced that last week... And a week in advance, they probably only got him to do it last minute, so that's really why they didn't do it. But if you got him to do it last week and, and you announced it, it probably would have done a lot better. But um, the fact that there was, if you didn't watch Raw, you wouldn't have known. You wouldn't have known. So they kind of messed up on that. But um, 
the, for the season premiere coming up against Monday Night Football, not a bad idea. Not not a bad show, and they did pretty good. All right, so we'll quickly talk about the Elimination Chamber pay-per-view coming up for Universe Mode. I know we've kind of gone along already. we kind of touched on a lot of things, but um, Elimination Chamber pay-per-view. Now, you've probably will already notice that there's a new episode of Universe Mode. By the time you listen to this, there will be a new Universe Mode episode dropping very, very soon or already out. And that will be episode number 200 of Universe Mode, this special Raw Super Show, which is awesome. So it's about an hour long. I am currently I currently finished it last night. I got it done pretty quickly, actually. I thought it was going to take me a long time to get it to, ready together. But uh, I've been on the grind, baby. I've been really working my ass off getting these Universe Modes ready to go. I promised you guys that I would be doing Universe Mode very frequently, and that's exactly what I've done. I've just churning them out constantly. So I've been mean, very, very pleased with my own efforts there, and um, it's also benefited my channel pretty well. I think a lot of you guys have been more invested in my channel recently, and um, a lot more comments, a lot more likes, a lot more views. So for my channel, doing all the universe mode is a great idea, and it's kind of reignited my love for the series. It's been a little bit stressful because a lot of the things that I wanted to do for the Road to WrestleMania I just cannot do, and I know I've got some criticism in the last couple of weeks of what's been going on in my universe mode, but um, there's a lot of things that I would like to have done, but I can't do it because of the game's limitations. You know, I would love to, love to do more promos with some guys. I know the guys like Reigns and Rollins and Ambrose, they're three pivotal points of my series, but I can't do any promo interactions with each other using 2K14 because they'll all walk out wearing their shield gear, and that would be absolutely ridiculous. So all you guys shit on me if I did that. So there's a lot of things that I would have liked to have done, and... There really isn't a way that I can kind of have someone stand in the ring by themselves. I mean, I can have two guys stand at each other and not have a microphone in their hand and just kind of look at each other and pretend that they're talking. That's really the only thing I can think of, of having some kind of a promo. But um, I don't really want to do that, so to say. I might have to just do it because that's all I can do. But um, there's a lot of things I want to do in the road to WrestleMania, but there's so many things that it's limiting me from the game, so I'm very frustrated with that. But... uh, for the most part, I've been pretty happy with the, the build-up to the Elimination Chamber. So like I said, once episode 200 is out, there'll be one more episode until the Chamber. And I've already started recording the Chamber, so I'm going to on the ball on that. Unfortunately, I'm going to be away all weekend, so I get the feeling that um, I might get very close to getting the Chamber ready to go, but I won't be able to do it. So I might try and get the promo video out on the weekend and kind of get that done. I need to try and get the pre-show done sometime um, before I go away on the weekend, which is a, such a, a bad time for me to go away, but it is what it is. But, um, yeah, so I really want to get the pre-show done. I don't think the pre-show is going to be as long as last time, but I think it's going to be really exciting as well. I think a lot of you guys really enjoyed the pre-show, which is very surprising. I kind of was a little bit hesitant on that concept, but you guys really did enjoy it, and I think it was a, a well-received video. So I think we'll definitely be doing that from every pay from now on. Just... Time zone is the issue, trying to get people together. You know, last time I recorded at 3 a.m. in the morning for me, so I have to try, probably try and do the same thing again before I go away. So it's going to be a busy couple of weeks for me. Um, I really have been looking forward to bringing you guys a lot of new content. And, you know, NBA 2K16 is probably the game that I'm just so excited for. I cannot wait. I pre-ordered it yesterday. My God, I am so keen, so pumped to play that. And I'm really keen to do a series, NBA 2K16 GM mode. It's going to happen on my series. You know, looking back on the 2K15 series, I really kind of regret not going along with it because I felt as though it could have been the start of something big for my channel and kind of grow my channel a little bit further beyond the the universe mode stuff. So that's something I'm definitely going to be doing this time around, doing the NBA stuff and really kind of growing my channel and branching out just a little bit whilst keep keep going on the universe mode and everything else so something a little bit extra on the side for the channel which is what the plan is going to be and hopefully that does work out pretty well and the new changes that they've made in gm mode and and my career oh my god this one's going to be good and i didn't really enjoy 2k15 that much because it wasn't really many changes to get, really interest me but this one looks really really good so i cannot wait for the new nba so that's really the big future of my channel right now especially when nba drops in what 10 days 11 days when that comes out, then the next month of my of my channel will be majority NBA and probably whatever Universe Mode episodes are left. 
So that'll be something to look forward to. And of course, the GM modes on the side. I'm going to be finishing my career mode up very soon. I've got a couple more episodes of that I want to do, and I'll probably just call it a day and just end the series because I want to do NBA. I'm not really feeling the micro mode anymore. I'm kind of moved on beyond that. I know you guys have probably moved on beyond that as well. You know, got still some decent views, but um, we'll finish this series off and then we'll move on to the NBA finish off the universe mode and look towards 2k16 for the universe mode as well which would be fantastic so some big thing coming up in the channel very very excited this is the this is the exciting period of time a stressful period of time for me because i got exams and assignments and everything right now october and november are very very stressful months for me but a very very exciting at the same time um i don't have a lot of time in these months but you know if i do it's just going to be all towards my videos so i'm really, really looking forward to bringing you guys some content and with that being said, what has Brendan been playing this week? Um, probably none of you guys will ever play this game in your life, but I got the new Rugby League game, and I've just been playing that. I mean, the new Rugby League game, if you're Australian, Rugby League Live 3, I, I, I definitely enjoy it. I, I think it's pretty good. I mean, I think they bring out the games at the wrong time, because if you guys don't know, the Rugby League season ends in September, October, and they bring out the game for you know the Rugby League in September and October. So they bring out the game at the end of the season, where it should be you bring out the game before the season starts, like FIFA. Well, FIFA doesn't really have a season, but, you know, like FIFA, you know, like Madden, you bring it out right before the football season starts. NBA, you bring it out right before that starts. MLB, NHL, they bring it out all the time before the, the season starts. Whereas the rugby league, they bring it out when the season ends. It's ridiculous. So whoever's thinking about, you know, the release date for that is just an idiot because you just yourself on the foot because I'm really already in cricket mode. My team got eliminated from the rugby league um, finals this week, which is heartbreaking. So I'm already in cricket mode. So I've already moved on from rugby league. I'm already yep done. Move on to the next sport. So just bring it out at this time of time of the year is a really really bad idea. But uh, I've been playing it at that. And like I said, I'm just looking forward to NBA. I'm, I wanted to get Mad Max really badly, but I stopped myself from doing it and said. Just wait, get it when all the, the next couple months have gone by because you won't have any time to play it. Um, you're going to be too busy playing NBA and then WWE, so you get no time. And I've been playing the FIFA demo as well, been enjoying that, so I'm very tempted to get FIFA 16. I think I probably will get the game. I guess it just comes out at a bad time because there's so many other games coming out and I, I don't know, I just don't have like enough time to play them all, so I'm going to have to probably wait a while before I do come and get it. I might get it towards the end of the year or something like that. I don't know. But uh, yeah, I've been enjoying the demo, so I probably will pick it up at some point. I know some people have actually requested that I play FIFA. I don't know why. I'm not that great at FIFA, but uh, I do enjoy playing it. I'm not going to lie. I do enjoy my FIFA, but um, yeah, I'm not exactly that great at the game. But uh, anyway, so we'll move on from that. We've got some questions to answer from you guys. We've got some voicemails and some other questions. So let's go ahead and, ke- and check out what you guys sent in this week. Hey Brendan, this is Mike, and this is my question. Are you going to use any of the Attitude Era superstars for your WWE 2K16 universe mode? Well, there's some different superstars coming in this year, so there's certainly some guys that I could see myself bringing back for a couple of opportunities. You know, I like how I do with some Legend series, like Legend episodes or the Royal Rumble, things like that. You know, I always bring back the odd legend here and there, so I think it's definitely possible that I could bring back somebody. I'm not, I'm not exactly sure who I will bring back, but I'm sure there'll be some people that I'll certainly be using. Hi, Brendan. Greg here from the forums, or the second come in, and I've got a question for you. You've got all three members of the Shield, Roman Reigns, Dean Ambrose, and Seth Rollins, and you've got to push one of them. You've got to repackage one of their characters and you've got to release one from the company what would you do for all of them and you can only do one so you can push one repackage one or release one from the company and they've got to have them with all of them so goodbye this is a really really tough question because i like all three i think all three are really really good um i know who i'd repackage and that would be Seth Rollins. I would repackage him because at the moment he's this chicken shit heel. What I would do is I would turn him babyface and probably turn him into more of a high flyer and a bit more like a Jeff Hardy kind of guy. Not wear like the face paint or anything like that, but like the high flying guy. And, you know, it's just kind of like that 
kind of like a, a good guy to the fans. I think he has that kind of look to him. Like when I first kind of saw him, I was he reminded me a little bit of Jeff Hardy a bit. So I I could see him being like that. Maybe take a bit more risk, a bit more of Daredevil kind of style. So I will repackage him into something like that. Now the next one. So the next one, who do I push or fire? I mean, this is a tough one. I like Roman Reigns, but I also really like Dean Ambrose. So I think Roman Reigns has a future, and I think I, if I was running WWE, I would really not want to fire him. But for the sake of the question, I think I would probably fire Roman Reigns, and I think I would push Dean Ambrose, because I feel as though if you gave Dean Ambrose the ball, I think he could produce an overall better job. Roman Reigns just has the look and the marketability, whereas Dean Ambrose has the ability to be the guy. So if you take away Dean Ambrose's look, his size, you take away that from the picture, and you just look at their core talent, Dean Ambrose is leaps and bounds better than Roman Reigns. So if I'm the head of WWE, and I can only keep one, I think I'd probably keep Dean Ambrose, because I think I'm going to get a better quality job out of them. Um, and Seth Rollins, we know he's a proven performer. We know he can really step it up and bring his A game, and I still think he's probably better than Roman Reigns, you know, for that sake, uh, sake alone. So I think both guys could really be something in the WWE. And I know Roman Reigns is the WWE's golden boy, but you look at Ambrose and Rollins, I've seen Rollins has done a pretty good job. I mean, considering what they've given him and what they've made him do, he's making it work to the best of his ability. He's having some great matches, but, you know, the gimmick and the way he wins those matches is questionable, and which makes his credibility as a champion go down. But if they actually gave him more of a serious kind of character, then perhaps he would uh, be more credible. But uh, Ambrose, if you gave him a psychotic, you know, lunatic, truly give him the lunatic character and really make him go crazy with it and really give him a lot of freedom with it. I think you could produce some really, really good stuff from Ambrose and some more mic time. I think that's what Ambrose needs. More mic time, more time to show us what he can do. But, uh, so overall, repackage Rollins, push Ambrose and fire Reigns. Hey, Brennan, this is Jacob Bradley. And I was wondering if you're going to get Until Dawn for PS4. And I'm from Michigan, United States. Well, this goes back to what I was talking about a moment ago. There's so many games coming out, and Until Dawn is one that I certainly looked at. I'm not a big fan of horror games, but this game piqued my interest, and I I had a look at it, and I was very tempted. But um, this is a game I could probably see myself picking up down the line. There's so many games I really want between now and December that Until Dawn, if I bought it, I would probably play it twice and never play it again. I've still got so many games from last year that I haven't played. I bought, like, every damn game that came out last year, and I still barely got through any of them. I mean, I still have The Witcher, Dragon Age, um, Alien Isolation, uh, The Evil Within. I have a stack of games I still haven't even got around to playing yet or finishing properly. I did pretty well this year, I'm not going to lie. I actually got through quite a lot of my games that I bought. I mean, I still have got Wolfenstein from last year as well. I haven't finished... A lot of games I need to get through, and I just feel like I'm being buried with all these great games coming out that I, you know, since I have a obsession in buying every freaking game, I've got to buy them all and play them. But, um, yeah, so I will be getting Until Dawn, maybe. I wouldn't say it's 100%, but I might get it down the line when it's on sale, you know, sometime next year. Hi, Brendan. Because CM Punk will not be in WWE 2K16, what will you do about that because he's your World of Weight champion? Thanks. Well, if you're still World Heavyweight Champion by the time the game comes around, it's pretty simple. I just make a CM Punk uh, create a wrestler and just use that until um, we get rid of him, I suppose. I mean, if we if it's a good one, I mean, don't get me wrong, if it's a good create a wrestler, then we might also keep him around, but otherwise um, we'll have to find a way to kind of remove him from the game somehow. Hey, Brendan, this is Jordan from South Carolina, and I want to have, I have a question for you regarding Lana being injured for several months. Do you think that this will prolong the dreaded Ziggler and Owens feud, or do you think WWE will just have it end at Night of Champions and let them go their separate ways? I think this feud needs to end. Now that Lana's out of the picture for four months, they cannot drag this thing out for four months. Surely they cannot do that. These two guys are not benefiting from the feud at all. It hasn't gotten much steam behind it. The last few weeks when Lana was was on TV, it was okay. When they had this whole love angle going along, it was it was a lot better than what they were doing before, but it still wasn't great. I think this feud could probably go down as the worst feud of the year, and it just really hasn't been good at all. So in my personal opinion, 
just have Rusev beat Ziggler and move on. Get it, get on with it. And potentially just get rid of Summer Rae with Rusev and just have Rusev go back on his own. And then bring back Lana later on and pair him back with Rusev if you like. But yeah, just end this thing. It's just not working at all. And let's just cut cut loose with it and you know try and salvage what we can from it and just move on. All right, a couple more questions here. That was the, the voicemails done for this week. So I appreciate everyone that has sent in a voicemail. Of course, you can send in a voicemail by checking out the website, brendaplays.com. And on the right-hand side of the page, there will be a green button where you can click uh, send a voicemail there. And also on the website as well, there's a poll on the website for voting for which tag team name you would like for Mark Henry and Kane for Universe Mode. So please go ahead and check that out as well. Give that a vote. Um, you can see there's five options on there. So go check that out. All right, so this first question comes from one of our Patreon pledges, which is really, really cool. I want to thank him very much. This comes from Cameron. He wants to know, what do you think about the rumors going around about Kurt Angle and Jeff Hardy returning in 2016? Well, the rumor is is that Jeff Hardy's contract is coming up, and there's some strong rumors that he will probably sign with the WWE or come back to the WWE early next year. This is not surprising to me at all. Kurt Angle, he's decided not to resign his contract with TNA. He did say last year that this would be his last contract, so he's taken an extended break from wrestling, which I think is a good idea. He needs to heal up, take six months, a year off, just chill out, relax, and refocus, regroup. The guy is getting up there in age. He probably only has one last run left in him, let's be honest. The WWE isn't exactly that interested, but I can see Kurt Angle just going in, and if he can't get a, a deal to wrestle, he might just come in and get a Legends deal and appear in the network, come on TV and cut a promo. You know how, you know how Flair and Bret Hart come back. You, Angle might become one of those guys and just come on and do those kind of things, which is kind of sad because I think Angle should have one last run, but if his body isn't capable of doing it, then fair enough. I wouldn't take the risk either, but I think Kurt Angle's a, probably a big chance of coming back in some capacity next year. I would lock Jeff Hardy in as well. I cannot see Jeff Hardy sticking around TNA. I don't think TNA could afford to re-sign him. I don't think they have the the money to, to, to re-sign Jeff Hardy for the money that he probably will be asking for. And if Jeff Hardy goes, then Matt Hardy will go, which will probably beg the question that the Hardy Boys are probably going to return next year. And the Hardy Boys versus the Dudleys at WrestleMania could be a possibility. You add in the New Day in as well. I mean, there's some rumors going around that uh, the Harlem Heat might be coming back. Booker T's open to the idea. If the Harlem Heat come back to take on the Dudleys, he's open to that idea. We could have some legendary tag teams come back and compete at WrestleMania, and we know that they want to break the attendance record, so that would be pretty cool. So I think the Hardys coming back would be a, a pretty big bonus. We saw how well the Dudleys have been doing. You add the Hardys in, and if you had those two guys have one more go around at, on pay-per-view, man, that would be pretty cool. So I wouldn't be surprised if we, we see the Hardy, Hardys back. I have to wonder, though, if you bring back the Hardys, do you have that small you know, six-month run with the Hardy boys, and then you break Jeff Hardy away and go back as a singles? Or do you just stick around, have one year as a tag team, and call it that? Personally, I would do the tag team run for, a long, for as long as it, you, know, you can, and, you know, to keep the tag division going and get Jeff Hardy back in the eyes of the fans again. And then you slowly bring him back as a singles because Jeff Hardy's still relatively young. Yes, he's got a lot of years on his body, but he's still relatively young to the point where he could have another two, three years at the top and, you know, still produce a good performance. So I think Jeff Hardy could bring him back and you could probably make him a top guy in an era that we've really struggling for top guys. I think Jeff Hardy could probably be inserted in there and really make an impact. Not TNA impact, but real impact. All right, so this next one comes from The Undertaker, 1994. Do you think the PG era will end soon? Not a chance in hell. (laughs) No way. With the current way society is, this PC society, there is no living chance in hell. There is just no freaking way this PG era will end. I don't even know if it will end for another 10, 15 years. Until society changes, there is no way. And honestly, the only reason why the PG era end in the first place for the WWE is because, well, you know, I'm talking about the new, you know, they were PG before the Attitude Era, you can't forget that, but... The only reason why they ended was because of competition. And I cannot see any competition coming the WWE's way 
for a long, long time. I mean, TNA was the closest thing. They have bombed. They're going down under. Who else is going to step up? Unless someone who's got a lot of money comes along and makes this new company. But even then, you you need the talent. You need the exposure. You need the star power. You need the TV deal to make that happen. And no TV networks are willing to take on wrestling because it's just such a huge risk. It's probably not worth taking. So... The PG era will stick around for a long, long time. I'm saying at least another decade. Next one comes from That Wrestling Boy. He wants to know, what, sef- what software do you use to edit, and do I watch any other WWE YouTubers? And he wants to congratulate me on the Royal Rumble. He thought it was pretty awesome. So thank you for that. I use Sony Vegas Pro uh, 13, I believe that's the edition I got, to edit my videos. Uh, it's pretty easy to use. It takes a while to get used to it. After that, it's pretty good. It does the job, cannot complain. It takes me a long-ass time to render, but other than that, I'm pretty happy with it. And I don't watch any other WWE YouTubers. I might check out a video here and there, but I personally haven't subscribed to many. I've got, like, a couple people that I like. I like. I think MathWiz does a great job, but other than that, I'm not really, like... I haven't really, like, talked to many other WWE YouTubers for a while. I've kind of moved on. I, I, I was a little close-ish, a little bit. I through a couple people. I talked to a few people, but... I kind of just do my own thing, and that's the way I've always wanted to be. I just want to be a guy who does my own thing. I wouldn't mind, like, networking and obviously doing some collaborations, like, you know, with the pre-show videos I do, I could bring someone on for that, or, you know, like a podcast, something like that. I'm definitely down to do something like that, but do I watch any other people's universe modes and things like that? No way. You know, if I ever copy someone's idea, or if I copy someone's song in a promo, or if I do anything, I have no idea, because I don't watch anyone's stuff, so I am just doing it because, oh, yeah, this looks cool to me, I might do that, or the idea come come along to me, I don't try and copy anyone, if I do, it's all by just accident, so I don't actually watch anyone else's stuff. To me, I, I don't really find it interesting to watch, personally, because I take spend so much time creating it myself, that I have just invested all that time into my own series that I couldn't possibly invest any time into someone else's series. So I like watching video- YouTube videos, don't get me wrong, but it's certainly not for WWE gaming. I, I like wrestling podcasts. I love watching wrestling, but for 2K gaming, WWE 2K gaming, not exactly a big fan. I like making videos on it. I love it, but um, watching it, not so much. And the last question for today's episode comes from Bad News Bullet. What's your thoughts on Jeff Hardy being the number one requested superstar to return to the WWE? I guess we kind of talked about this one before. And what's your thoughts on Kurt Angle wanting his last match against Daniel Bryan? I would love to see Kurt Angle and Daniel Bryan. I mean, both guys got some injury problems right now, but I think that would still be a great matchup. Even at Angle's age, I still still think he could deliver a fantastic performance against Daniel Bryan. WrestleMania match, man, that would be awesome. And like I said with Jeff Hardy, he's just money. He's You bring him back. Honestly, Jeff Hardy... He is the number one requested person for my universe mode. I know this doesn't really mean much, but every time I every time I bring, think about bringing back someone, it's always, bring back Jeff Hardy. When are you going to use Jeff Hardy? When's Jeff Hardy coming back? I, Jeff Hardy's name always is constantly coming up for a return. There's a lot of people like Jeff Hardy, so I think a lot of people want to see him back. So I certainly wasn't a huge fan of Jeff Hardy. I thought he was pretty cool, but he wasn't like my top five, top ten even. But I thought it was pretty cool. Even when I was younger, I wasn't a huge fan. But I would certainly be down to see him back. I think it'd be pretty cool. And if he's cleaned up his life now, so that's all that I really need to know about. If he's cleaned up, he's going to represent the company in a good way, then I think it's a good decision decision to bring him back. Alrighty, guys. So that will do it for this week's edition of Let's Talk Tuesdays. Now, I do want to apologize. I have gone back and I've realized the first majority of the show actually had some problems or like skipping problems i really do apologize for that i still think i actually I'm not exactly sure but if it did happen i really do apologize for that that won't happen again but uh that was my own problem i was trying to do double duty and really smashing out my computer whilst i was doing this so i did make the error so i will make sure i fix that for next time so i do apologize for that um i hope you guys are still able to listen to it fine the Elimination Chamber pay-per-view is coming up probably by the time next week's Let's Talk Tuesday comes around. The pay-per-view will hopefully be uploaded or be very close, like the promo and the pre-show and all that will be done, I'm hoping. But um, yeah, so 
keep an eye out on for that and keep an eye out on the other universe mode videos and the GM modes and everything like that coming along and uh, just let me know what you guys are thinking of my channel right now are you guys enjoying the content that I'm bringing out and uh, if you are let me know and uh, check out the show we're on Spreaker make sure you give some love on the Spreaker to try and get our ranking up and keep the show's word being spread out there and uh, just keep the support up guys I really do enjoy all the support you guys give check out the Patreon page as well if you want to pledge and uh, support the show that way that would be very very much so appreciated and uh, yeah check out the website as well to send in a voicemail and the forums brendanplays.com forward slash forums to send in a question for next week's episode to have your question answered next week we didn't actually have that many questions this week so keep the questions coming a lot of the time it's you guys just responding to what I'm talking about but uh, make sure if you do have a question to let me know and make sure you post it on this episode. So on episode 72 of Let's Talk Tuesdays for your question in the YouTube comment section so I can see it because I don't check it on my other videos for other questions. So make sure you do put it in the in the, uh, the comment section for the most, most recent episode. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching and I will see you all next Tuesday.